How did you first encounter Camp Mac? Uh, I encountered Camp Mac, I think the best way to encounter Camp Mac, uh, dropping an older sibling off. So I remember very distinctly, um, I was dropping my oldest sister, Erin, uh, well, obviously I wasn't, my parents were, but uh, my oldest sister was going to youth camp, and um, actually both my older sisters were going to youth camp, and I was there, and I wasn't quite old enough to go to camp yet, and I was like, wow, this place looks awesome, and then the next year was my first year at Samplers Camp. So that was, you know, uh, like we took Aaron and Jen over to the cabins, and then um, I said, cool, I'm going to go to the swings, <laughs> and there were... It felt like dozens of other kids exactly my age. I'm sure there were like three or four. <laughs> but it felt like I had wandered into this magical world where there were no adults and there was only playgrounds and trees and friends to play with. And I was like, this is the best place ever. <laughs> um, and then so the next year was my first year at Samplers Camp. And I remember my counselor, I don't remember their name, but I remember that he taught us how to burn our names on the name tags um, over on the 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 it was brand new then <laughs> the the new walkway the long walkway out of sarah major because that's mm. where we stayed for samplers camp and so i remember like standing up on that railing so that i could like lean over and and see what i was doing with the magnifying lens and i wasn't doing anything crazy you know i was just burning the whole name tag i think <laughs> but that's how i discovered camp and i have all these beautiful childhood memories that stem from coming here to drop off my sisters, to coming to pick up my sisters, um, all the way through, you know, my my last summer on staff that was two years ago. So yeah. <laughs> that's a history for me. I'm like 25. Uh, that's like a 20 year history. It's literally my whole life. I, I can connect and tie back to camp. Nice. So as a camper, were you just, did you do any specialty camps? Or were you pretty strictly finders, followers, youth camp? I did one specialty camp. I did the survivor camp. Hmm. Um, and Randall Westfall, uh, if that's not his last name, you need to edit that out. It is. That is. <laughs> it is. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, we bonded um, quite a bit. He was um, sort of the older brother figure that I had been missing because he was like almost identical in age to my oldest sister. In fact, actually, I'm pretty sure he and Aaron went to camp together mm. when they were kids. Um, so he felt like the older brother to my older sisters, um, which was something I really needed at the time. I was like middle school, you know, when Survivor Camp normally mm -hmm. is. But that was so much fun and that really set me off down the like outdoorsy path mm -hmm. where, um, Kurt would just kind of like walk over while we were, I remember we made monkey bread one night on the cast iron mm. and Kurt magically appeared and Kurt always seemed to just wander over when we were doing something really fun or cool <laughs> like bowstring fires or mm. monkey bread or um, when we were messing around with addle addles. Uh, yeah, Kurt was there for all the cool stuff, <laughs> um, which was cool because that kind of, you know, in, uh, strengthened my relationship to Kurt and then sort of led to me realizing that Kurt, Rex, and Brad were actually different people and not just the same old guy with a white beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that was the only specialty camp I did. Otherwise, yeah, I was pretty much strictly um, uh, the Seekers, Finders. Uh, I think I actually skipped Followers. I mm -hmm. think I was doing the specialty camp then instead. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I jumped into youth camp and then did my, my years of youth camp. Nice. So... In your camp experience, after that, you became a summer staffer. Yep. Why? <laughs> um, Jesse, when I was maybe 17, said, uh, so when are you going to come be on my staff? And I was like, that's an option? I, you're telling me I can work here? <laughs> um, and so I was like, yeah, I'm going to work at camp. That sounds awesome. Well, mostly it was just that realization of, wow, I get to be on staff. That's really cool. Um, and I kept coming back to be on staff because I wanted to continue to provide that cool experience I had as a kid to the next generation. And I feel like I, you know, I did that and, and, and that was why I stayed on staff. Uh, I don't have many memories of staff in particular. They kind of tend to like fade into the background. So how many years were you a regular summer staffer before becoming waterfront director? Actually, just one. Just one. And I wish I had more. 
Um, because I feel like I really jumped in to that head first without having any idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my second year as waterfront director that I felt some ownership and pride in what I was actually doing. Cause, um, yeah, man, when I was like 20 and 21, I was basically still a kid. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that first year on summer staff, I thought everything was awesome and I was the best ever. And then I was talking with Jesse, you know, years later, and I realized that she actually had some doubts about me coming in on Waterfront Director. And, and I was like, wow, I didn't know that. Um, and so that kind of humbled me a little bit, but like in a good way, right? Yeah. Right. Where, where I kind of had to, I had the opportunity to look back and, and see, okay, here's how I saw the situation, but from this other angle, right? Like this other angle, perhaps, <laughs> um, you know, I was like, wow, um, things shifted a little bit, right? They didn't quite line up with, with how I remembered it. Um, and so I think that was actually really important for me in growing into the waterfront position, uh, waterfront director position and, and just into me as an adult, right? Where I could say, wow, okay. Um, here's how I, re I reacted to this situation. Everything seemed to line up square, but if you kind of shift your point of view a little bit, uh, something didn't add up. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was really cool. I miss being on general summer staff. Honestly, I was actually just talking with Dave. That's why it took me so long to get over <laughs> here. And while my coffee was already half gone. Um, cause we were talking about, yeah, just having summer staff, um, mm -hmm. you know, the experience of. Okay, I got to be in the kitchen to to put away clean dishes from last night at six thirty, and then right after breakfast, I'm going out on facility. I'm going to clean all the restrooms, and then I'm going to spend my afternoon. Early afternoon is going to be lifeguarding, and then I'm going to transition into climbing tower in the evening, and then I got a night hike, and then I'm going to bed. Right, and just that huge variety of I'm going to do a little slice of everything that camp does in one day, and that's something that I really miss because instead. Coming in as waterfront director, I came in, you know, first thing in the morning and I'd be like, okay, it rained, so I got to go bail the, the rowboats. We have a, a low ropes course, so I need to put together a list of how I'm going to lead that. And then, you know, we have climbing towers, so I'm going to make sure to get out to climbing tower. That's no big deal. I'm already going to be a low ropes course. Okay, now it's time for lunch, right? And then everything revolved around the program instead. Mm -hmm. And that just takes so much more effort, honestly, <laughs> um, because you need to be so much more present because that's when you're actually interacting with the kids and that's when they're going to notice, Hey, mm -hmm. um, if you screw that up, you kind of screw up a, a kid's whole, like a portion of their experience. Mm -hmm. And if you only have five days at camp, if one day is bad, man, that's 20% down the drain. That sucks. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so what would you say to someone considering summer staff do it. kind of on the fence? I think you should do it. Um, it's hard work. It's really hard. Um, I, I already, I thought I was not a morning person and then coming to summer staff, I knew I was not a morning person. It stretches you, it forces you to grow. I had to learn that, um, how to keep my eyes open <laughs> even when I'm tired because when you're coming in for morning dip, that's important, right? If you're a lifeguard for morning dip, you gotta be awake. Um, it's challenging, but it's it's very rewarding because at the end of every day uh, of of being on summer staff, you know that you help to create the vision that is camp. I think the vision of camp goes away really quickly when uh, we stop taking care of it, and if we aren't making an effort to 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 bring it into life every day, then it's just it's going to die, and and so. Being a part of that and being the the machine that drives it forward is the most rewarding experience I've ever had and And I can't recommend it enough So part of our theme for giving day this year and is to raise money for a new summit Ah. As waterfront director you got to experience the summit. In Boy, did I ever. Boy, did I ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, a new summit is, uh, that'll be nice. Um, patching the one that we have is an effort in futility, it feels sometimes, um, because you get just one single grain of sand, right? And I mean, a, gr a single grain of sand and it'll ruin the entire patch. Um, trying to do it while the, the thing is on water, like, forget about it. 
Um, it's sometimes it, it'll it'll float away. I was pretty fortunate; it only floated away on me once. Um, I've heard that it's done that way more in the past. Uh, I I I've dove down to the bottom of the lake. It's not that deep over there, but still, uh, it's it's pretty deep. It's pretty dark. It's pretty cold. And I lifted up the chain so that I could physically move the the weights on the bottom of the lake up the slope a little bit because the slope's really deep right there. That's not really super important, but it came to mind. <laughs> uh, a new summit, I, th I mean, the summit has always been the most popular attraction to camp. Uh, it wasn't really a thing when I was a camper. I kind of like missed a year and then I came back and I was like, whoa, summit, that's a weird thing. I heard my younger cousins telling me about it and I was like, that sounds dumb. There's no way that's going to be cool. It's cool. It's really awesome. Um, I think it, it really, it helps the image of camp. Um, it gives us a, a really big attraction of like, hey, we got this, right? What, don't, don't go to the other beach. That's just got sand. We got a water slide on the lake. That's cool. Um, so as as you got to see a lot of kids use the summit oh, yeah. while you were there. What type of impact did it have on the kids that got to engage with it it's like a light switch it was like it, it i <laughs> watching their their faces when they climb up especially those that are like me who are like well i'm 15 feet up i don't, I don't know about this and you see this kind of like confusion and a little bit of fear but also excitement as they're kind of climbing up and it builds and builds and then and then they get their feet out and they start moving in that six first six inches it's just <laughs> and you know, and then you're going, um, and and then they get to the bottom, and then and then it's just pure excitement, and it compounds and builds and builds and builds and builds, and then even more importantly, afterwards they crash so that then their counselors can actually have a nap, <laughs> or at least some peace and quiet in the cabin <laughs> later in the day. That's the impact that it has. I mean, just that single object can can take a decent day and turn it into a wow hey this is a great day so it's the last year on summer staff was 2020 and that was a little different technically yeah technically. yeah i guess you could call me summer staff that yeah. year that was kind of weird you were but... here during the summer and only during the summer uh, this is true yeah so now you've come back as a volunteer what inspired you to want to come back again um i really just i i'll take any excuse i have to come back to camp um I, I, I miss being here. Uh, every time I come back, I, I feel kind of like the prodigal son, uh, where I'm welcomed, you know, uh, even if I come in at like 10 30, 11 o'clock at night, um, I'm pretty sure I came in to help out with a group at climbing tower. And, uh, this, this was a while ago now. I don't remember exactly when, but it was, it was a bit, it's been a little bit. Uh, and I came in, right after I got off my second shift job. So I, I get off work at 11. I got here between like one and two in the morning <clears throat> and there was a stack of linens on the bed waiting for me. And, and that's the hospitality. It's a simple thing. But to me, it was like, wow, I'm exhausted. I'm dirty. I can take a shower. I have a clean towel. I got hot water and go in and lay down in a clean bed with clean sheets in a room that I can close the door. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Hey, that's nice. Um, yeah. And it's a way for me to continue to give back to the community that honestly helped raise me um, and, and just moving that vision forward. Nice. So you've gotten to do and experience a number of things here as a camper and as a staff member. Is there anything that you think you've done that you wish more people would experience or do while they're here at Camp Mac? <sighs> um, just... The, the after hour shenanigans, right, you, you know, when the whole staff comes together to watch Moana for the eighth time that week, <laughs> and it's only Wednesday, <laughs> right, um, that's, that's fun, right, you, that, that feeling of camaraderie um, is something that I certainly didn't experience in college, but I experienced here. Um, as, as a camper, I think sailing, learning how to sail a, a sunfish, that really really got me good <laughs> when I, when I started youth camp and I realized, oh, hey, I get to, I get to sail now. Um, and that was a huge draw for me. And, 
and out on staff when we'd finally bring out the sailboats because we had a camp coming that could actually use them. I would always get excited because then, you know, I knew that I could go and play with them mm -hmm. off the clock, so to speak, and just tell Jesse when I'm going out, when I'm coming in. Um, and I got to learn those skills, right? So I learned how to tie some knots and not like anything crazy, like a figure eight and a, and a hitch, right? Uh, those aren't like, or in, in like a, a cleat, these aren't like super complex knots, but they're kind of cool and uh, the art of knot tying isn't really a thing anymore. Yeah. Um, from what I know of the modern Navy, they don't really use a whole lot of rigging and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so learning to sail is something that's very unique to camp. Uh, the other camps that I've gone to don't have sailboats. Mm. Um, and once you do the sunfish getting on a laser, now that, that's, that's like going from a, uh, oh, I don't know, a five-speed Honda Accord from 2007 and then getting in behind the wheel of like a, a, a 2019 uh, Civic that's been like amped up, which is a really weird <laughs> comparison to make, but you'd be surprised at some of the customizations you can make to a Civic <laughs> to make that thing fly. And those lasers do just fly. Nice. And and the sail the sailing is so cool. I kind of wish there wasn't ice on the lake. I also wish the lake was higher, you know, warmer than 34 degrees. I go <laughs> sail right now. It's been windy all, all week that I've been here. Awesome. So you mentioned that Camp Mac has been a part of your life for 20 years now, ish. Ish, yeah. What's your hope and dream for the next 20 years of Camp Mac? Um, my hope and dream for Camp Mac for the next 20 years is, I think, to build on what's already here. Uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, but as this younger generation grows, um, I, I think it's important that camp would want to continue to support that younger generation. I think the scholarships that they give currently are, are nice. Um, and I, I'm being pretty honest. I, I, I think the wages should remain competitive. I think they honestly are considering that you're getting room and board included in your wages. That that's important. And the experience, I really just, I, I want to see camp stay if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, because as, uh, things are feeling less permanent now than they were before with, with how tumultuous the past decade has been. Mm. Um, and I think that makes camp almost more important because it does feel like it stayed the same. And, and so as much as I would love camp to change into the, you know, the next 20 years, I kind of don't want it to, too much. Mm. Um, Upgrades are nice, you know, the new siding on Ulrich, new siding, what was that, five years ago now? Yeah. Um, but it's still kind of shocking where it's like, whoa, hey, that's not covered in cedar planks anymore. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. your camp back stories, and thanks for all you do for camp. It's my pleasure.